All right, friends, so today I wanted to an example of how false gospels slash false prophets that keep get people under bondage to the law. I want to show you, I'm sorry, I'm going to go I want to show you in scripture how this actually, the fruit that came out of this was actually um, different um, physical health, essentially implications um, that people were dealing with. I want to show this with you because when people are under bondage to the law, not only does it lead to fear and anxiety, it's a very heavy weight, but anyway, the enemy can still kill and destroy in a person's life. Um, it's a foothold to him because the law is known as the curse of the law. And so with that, whenever we see it in the book of Genesis, um, what also came into the world through the curse of the law was, was sin, we know, brokenness, sickness, etc. Um, and so I just, I want to show you specifically in the Gospels. I want to show you a specific example um, how this is one of the fruits that comes out of people being under bondage of the Gospel um, and how us knowing that um, we have rest from the burden of the law and we've been completely set free is, is so huge for us not to live under that weight. We're going to be looking at Matthew 7, verses 15 to 20. Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. We're going to go into Mark um, chapter 11. Oh, first we're now on Mark 3. <laughs> in Mark 3, we see how Jesus heals a withered hand. And he entered again into the synagogue. And there was a man there with which had a withered hand. And they watched him, talking with the Pharisees, known as the religious leaders, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day, that they might accuse him. And he saith unto the man which had the withered hand, stand forth, and he saith unto them, Is it lawful to do God on the Sabbath day, or to do evil, to save life, or to kill? But they held their peace. Notice where else we see that in John chapter 10, through anyone telling someone that they can climb up some other way to heaven, such as getting them under bondage of the law, that then the thief cometh not for but to steal, to kill, and to destroy through getting people under the bondage. Yeah. And when he looked around or about them on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of their hearts, he saith unto the man, Stretch forth thine hand, and he stretched it out, and his hand was restored, whole oh, as the other. And the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel with the Herodians against him, how they might destroy him. Notice that word, the word kill. When Jesus asked, you know, is it lawful to do God on the Sabbath day, to save life or to, to do evil, to save life or to kill? And then notice it also talks about how the Pharisees, they plotted how they might destroy him. I want you to understand. <laughs> The Pharisees were known as the religious leaders, right? Through religion, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. When we see that, um, because the Bible specifically uses those words to describe the Pharisees, it calls them religious leaders. When we see it talk about the religious leaders, we say that word religious. Through religion, hear me, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy in people's lives. 
okay? Please hear that. That was so huge for me to understand, okay? Religion, the Spanish the law, that's not how God created us to live. The enemy uses it to try to still come and destroy our lives, and it's false prophets that try to get us under the bondage of the law because it's a heavy burden. And because some people, that's what they've been taught. That's what's taught in the vast majority of Christianity. Now, we're going to look at Mark 11. The lesson of the fig tree. There's that word again, fig, right? Because we saw it talk about false prophets, you know, talking about men gathering um, figs, right? And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up for their own. So we're going to go ahead and go up to... Um, <laughs> Lord, and Jesus entered into Jerusalem. Mark 11, verse 11, and into the temple. And when he had looked around about upon all things, and now the even tide was come, he went out into Bethany with the twelve. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered, said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. And then we go down to verse 20. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remember, remembered, saith unto the master, Behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. I want to show you guys something. So it's amazing because if we go back to the Garden of Eden and the story of creation, after the fall of sin, Jesus, or God says, Verse 22, chapter 3. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and also, and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Well, what's amazing is that um, when Jesus came, right, we, we, we were able to live forever. When Jesus came, because of all that he had done on the cross, but we see this kind of come full circle <laughs> when Jesus cursed the fig tree. Why is that? Because we just read that the fig trees or that false prophets, the fruit they produce, it's, it's, it's figs. And so it leads to this verse. Why does Jesus curse it? Because it's standing for the curse of the law. And that what comes to the curse of the law, we just read about how the fig tree withered away. And then we just read in Mark 3 about the man with the withered hand. That word, seeing it again, it's not a coincidence. So this withered hand, this health struggle that this man was dealing with essentially represents in the Bible um, some of the fruit that comes from the curse of the law, false prophets getting people under bondage of the curse of the law. But we have this full circle moment and Jesus talks about, um, you know, that, or God talks about, um, lest he put forth his hand and all and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. So then whenever Jesus curses this fig tree and says, no man eat free, fruit of thee hereafter forever, it's coming full circle, and he's saying, no man eat from the fruit of the trees 
that produce figs of these false prophets, this fruit that comes from the curse of the law. No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. Why? Because we're supposed to eat and partake of the life we have in Christ. The tree of life. So it comes full circle. We're not supposed to eat that tree that produces that fruit of the curse of the law. But of the tree of life, which is Christ. So when I think it's Peter, he talks about in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots, and Peter calling him remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. He curses this fig tree. That word curse is there because it stands for the curse of the law. And the fruit that comes out of the curse of the law, when people are trying to get, false prophets are trying to get people under bondage of the law. And I not only believe that it's very heavy, not only people being told that they have to be saved or ensure they're saved through this, but even people that have not been told um, that, but they're still looking at the law in their lives, but the letter killeth, the spirit giveth life. And so it talks about how you know, a corrupt tree cannot bring forth good fruit. Likewise, um, a good free, a good tree cannot bring forth corrupt fruit. Why? Because um, a, a person that's not a false prophet who they have a spirit dwelling in them as his spirit bears fruit because to abide in Christ that's offered to produce as she said part abide in me I knew apart from me can do nothing a person who has a spirit dwelling in them and is resting in Christ not under the law, but the fruit that is produced through that is good because it's his spirit producing all fruit. Through a person. And so that's why it talks about that. Okay, so that's one of like many examples, but I hope this can help anyone um, understand that the curse of the law, when people get someone under the law, and we're told that, you know, curse is he that can get through tree, Jesus has redeemed us from the curse of the law, completely redeemed us. So when people are trying to get you under bondage of the law, we're not just talking about this fear, this anxiety, this heavy burden, this heavy weight. Um, it's for liberty of Christ to set us free. Stand from the do of ourselves, be burning it by of slavery for Jesus has my yoke is easy, my burden is light. It's not the heavy burden and yoke of the law. But we've been broken free from it in Jesus' name. But when people try to get you under a bunch of law, there's this fruit that comes out of that, as Jesus demonstrated, and how we're not supposed to eat fruit fixed from false prophets trying to get us under a bunch of law. We're not supposed to eat fruit from the, the tree that represents the curse of the law. We're supposed to freely eat, partake, 
in the shade of life, which is Christ. As a spirit bears fruit. Okay. And then in a similar manner, Christians that um, uh, uh, listening to Christians that are not getting out under bondage of the law, but they have this spirit dwelling in them that um, remind you to partake of the life that we have in Christ, the tree of life, which is Christ. And that we have been completely set free from the curse of the law. Okay. I love you guys so much. I hope this video helps you. God bless you.